Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom for Tom Ruth Philippine Adventures. I just did a video and I happen to have an idea. I always say this all the time. We're not in Kansas anymore, but guess what? We're so spoiled as Americans, aren't we? Aren't we spoiled? Let me tell you the reasons why I say we're spoiled. Here's some of the things that some of the guys think when they come to the Philippines is going to be the same as. Some of the guys coming here never been outside their city and or town and never been out of within a hundred miles of their house or never been outside their state. So I want to tell you guys, here are some things that you're going to be, have to really think about when you come to the Philippines. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't take all and sell everything you have there until you come here and live here for a year at least or six months. Then, if you like it, you love it here, you want to sell everything, go back to the state, sell everything you have. But test it here first. Don't do this. But here's some of the things you're going to find that you're not going to have available uh, like, like you think you're going to. Hot water? Hot water's not available. Not all toilets are the same. Some to toilets are ground level. Some toilets are knee high. Some toilets are lower than that. You're not going to find an American sized toilet here in the Philippines. You have to take a shower by a scoop and that's going to really, really kind of knock your socks off because it's a cold, cold water. Another thing you've got to think about is this water itself. Now, I'm doing this by memory, guys, so <laughs> but I've been here seven years, so. Uh, drinking water. Oh, it's a no-no. You do not drink the water here. Man, I can vouch for that because I had typhoid and have typhoid. Once you have it, you have it. So uh, don't drink the water here. First and foremost, don't drink anything. And if they make and they offer a drink on the side of the road, don't drink the water because sometimes it's water that they use that is not so good. You have to really think about things. If it's nesty, make sure it's done with fresh water. If it's a mango shake, make sure it's done with fresh water and the ice. Don't just take ice random. Random ice can hurt you and kill you. It can actually hurt you and put you in the hospital. You can catch dinghy here very easily. If you're a person from the States, what you need to do, you need to actually put some uh, off and some of the other things on to protect yourself from dinghy. And you don't think about it. Dinghy is something that is very prominent here. Uh, R.R.'s caught it before. R.R. had dinghy. And it was something that really, really made her sick for a long time. And she, we had to, we had, had to get transfusion of blood for her. So you have to really think about that. Another thing you don't think about is, is if you're here in the Philippines and you're, you said, I want to go to point A to point B. I want to travel from here to there. I want to go from where I'm at Manila and I want to travel to this place. And I want to go see the resort. Be prepared for it taking all day. If you plan on going somewhere and say it's 100 miles, be prepared for it taking all day. Because a plane flight could be delayed. A taxi driver could be delayed, traffic could be delayed, a mountain landslide could be delayed. So many things delay your travel series, it'll drive you crazy. So you'll have to have the patience to make the decision whether you still want to do it or not. When you do something, make sure you plan it out in detail because if you shoot from the hip, be prepared to stay there and sleep there overnight. One time Ruth and I decided when I flew in that we're going to, instead of staying the night, we're just going to head down to a Bukid Nome here. We're in Manila. and. Uh, on our way, we stopped in Davao to catch the bus. Well, guess what? The buses were, were all packed, people sleeping on the ground, people sleeping everywhere. And I said, I guess we're going to have to spend the night here. Sometimes we prepared to spend the night at the bus terminal late at night or wherever you may be, and we, so we spent the night there. You have to really uh, be flexible and have uh, the, the mindset that it does not matter attitude. Because if you have a mindset that you have and you don't have any patience, which I don't have, I sometimes have to really bite my tongue and, and uh, punch the wall, not really, but, but really uh, calm myself down. You'll, you'll find yourself in those situations where you don't really think about. Another thing you have to think about, not every house has air conditioning, not every place has air conditioning, not every place has any air conditioner or refrigerator at all. Not all apartments have all those things. If you get an apartment, you may have to buy those things. Sometimes I'll furnish an aircon, sometimes I'll furnish that stuff, but not all has all that you want. So make sure you check before you rent a place or have a place that they have availability or a stove and or some type of cooking. Everybody cooks outside. All cooking is done outside. They call that a dirty kitchen. We're in the States. We cook everything on the stove inside or in the oven inside or on the grill outside. Most of the things done here is dirty kitchen outside the house. Imagine a dirty kitchen is basically a uh, a, 
a not, not brick and mortar, a mock-on with bamboo and that put together and you cook outside with wood. And that brings into the another subject. Everybody cooks with wood here. If you're outside, they cook with wood. And so that's the reason the trees is going na na little na na little na little na. So they have a program here, plant a tree, uh, where they're trying to get the trees built back up again, but uh, it's not working. Uh, the tree gets uh, 10 feet tall and they're cutting it down for wood. So you have to really think about wood or coal. They have coal that they use. They use the old coconuts for coal and or there are certain trees that they use also so you can do it by coal it costs you you know 20 30 peso a day something like that to cook a couple two or three meals for coal so figure a dollar a day also your visas visas are good for uh, 60 days 30 days 60 days 90 days depending or six months I'd figure a dollar a day your visa is going to cost you a dollar a day people don't think about that it's a dollar a day cost and or if you go get your ACR cards of $50. So you have to really be prepared. Not everything also when they give you change back, they may get confused sometimes in giving change back. And what I mean by that is if you give them 500 peso, some of the girls may not have the skills to, to help back with that. Why? Because they're either young or never finished school. There's a lot of kids that are anywhere from 10 to 15 years old that just not going to school and not going to go to school. And the parents don't make them go to school here. That's a big difference. The kids, another thing I want to talk about, the kids rule the house in that situation a lot of times. Kids tell the parents, I don't want to go to school, and the parents don't make them go to school. Where us Americans, we make kids go to school. It's supposed to go to school, let's go to school. It's, you want to do this, you, you want a better life, this is what you have to do to achieve that. And so, they sometimes don't tell them that. Now you got on the other side where parents really want the students to go and really push them, push them, push them uh, to do and go to college and things like that. Another thing that's really different here in the Philippines more than anything else and people don't really think about it is is that when you go to do something in the barangay or have papers that you have to have done, be prepared that it's going to take two, three, four, five, six trips to get one thing done. Getting married or filing for taxes or just anything you have to have done, be prepared that it takes a while. Sometimes you got to get a brown guy stamp and then go somewhere else and come back and get the signature off the brown guy and then take that to the municipality. Go do that and then you have to go from there to the land bank, make a payment at land bank uh, for two, three, four hundred pesos from land bank back to the municipality. Go to a different department just to get something signed. Now we did all this on the land. Once you get that signed, then you have to go to Malai Balai and then you go to Malai Balai file it with them, file it, you have to go from there, sign on the document, and then go back to land bank, pay another fee, and then go back to the uh, register's office and sit there and wait for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours, sometimes two, three days, and then it goes to the next step, next step, next step, next step, next step. It's like five steps. It took us four and a half years, so be prepared four and a half years to get the title and deed squared away on our property that we had that I bought seven years ago. So. You have to be prepared for that. Also, if you're planning on getting visas and things like that, they have fast-tracked that, making it so much easier now. But be prepared that things may be st stuck on that also. When you go to, to get, get, renew your visa and you want a 13A, it may take longer than you expect it to take. So you have to really think about all these things like this. But you can go to a dentist and you can go to eye care really cheap. Uh, rent is cheap. The, there's three things. Service business, anything with service. Anything with eye care and dental and rental of houses, those are the only benefits that you have living here in the Philippines. That's it. Other than the wonderful culture and the wonderful people and or the beaches and or the sand. Other than that, there's no other benefits here in the Philippines, really, if you think about it. Because rent is cheap. That's the reason you come here. Cheap living, right? Dental and eye care. Now, we're not going to talk about hospitalization. That's that's the reason why a lot of Americans are leaving the Philippines. 35,000 Americans left, according to my friend at the consular's office in Manila, told me on phone. 35,000 Americans left in no, uh, January and February of this year, headed back to the States because of the insurance situation. So be prepared for that. You cannot get insurance if you're over 70. You cannot get insurance even at 65. A lot of policies limit you at 60. Even if you have insurance, 99% of the time you're going to have to pay for it up front and they'll reimburse you later. 
but the reimbursement later may not be the amount of money that you paid in. So you may get a quarter of that, a half of that, or whatever. So some cases, it's better maybe take your wife and look at other countries if you want hospitalization. Uh, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, I understand good policies there that you will do. And the, the insurance companies pay them directly and they take the bills directly from there. The reason they don't accept the payments here is because during the COVID, they forgot to pay the bills to a lot of the hospitals and the hospitals are saying no. We're not accepting any more patients with this particular coverage. Either you self-insure it, you pay for it up front, and we'll reimburse you later. So you have to take the paperwork once you come out of the hospital because you already paid the bill. And don't think they won't keep you in the hospital if you don't pay the bill. They will. You'll have to put up land and or property to to hold yourself to that. So there's a lot of, lot of scenarios you have to really think about. So really think about before you come here to the Philippines, get your feet wet. Come here first and make a decision whether you want to stay or not. God bless everybody, and thank you so much. And see you guys next time on Tom and Ruth Philip Interventures.